Hey guys, this is Ed from Mission Ed Possible. Welcome back to my Atari programming series. Today is gonna to be episode nine and we're gonna be working on expanding our map so we can set up some scrolling. So let's get into it. Currently we have our character being able to uh, see on the screen. We have walls and, and floors and stuff like that. And this currently takes up one screen and that's cool, but we're gonna to wanna to have a map that's gonna be able to be scrolled. And right now there's not much scrolling that's gonna happen because it only takes up one screen. So the first thing we're gonna to need to do is we're gonna to need to change the way we're doing our map. And so currently we have in our main.asm file, we have just our little map right here. And so we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to wanna to actually make it much bigger. I looked into how big our map should be and did a little bit of calculation and the deal is is that obviously we'd love to have a huge map right um the problem is that we have a very limited amount of memory and the way it's going to have to work out is that we're going to need one byte for each square or each tile in our our map and on the screen we're actually going to need two bytes per because we have the two characters that make up the, the tile right so the problem with that is that we're going to need a lot of memory. And so like uh, just a shot in the dark, if we're gonna say, hey, let's make our maps 256 characters by 256 characters. Um, so just doing a little bit of math with that, uh, let's see if we pull up a calculator. If we add 256 times 256, this would be bytes that's 64k <laughs> um that's as much memory as we have on our machine in total that's not gonna work um you know we could do some chunking and make it so that we could have a bigger map but that would be that would probably get way too complicated so let's let's scale it back a little bit if we try 64 by 64 we'd end up with 4086 so that's 4k uh, and that's a lot more reasonable. You got to figure on our machines, we have, you know, at most uh, 64K addressable. If we wanted to make this game only work on the XL or XE series or modified machines that have more than 64K, um, you know, we could take advantage of that, but that's getting into an area that I, I don't really want to do. Uh, yeah, we'd have to do bank switching and stuff like that, which, which you know, that's that's getting way more complicated. So uh, at 4K for our map, we would need 8K in screen space in order to uh, store our, uh, our, to be able to make our map on the screen. Um, so that would be a total of 12K used for the map itself. Um, that would be for the map and the canvas, okay? Which is reasonable. Uh, I think 12K, and, and keep in mind, uh, we're only going to need to store one map at a time. We're eventually going to be having things procedurally generated, so we really only need that bit of RAM at any given time. Um, now, theoretically, we could free up the map space if we needed to, but we are definitely going to need that 8K for our screen space. There's, there's just no way around that. Um, okay, so we're going to stick with 64 by 64. And I think that's going to work out to be pretty decent um, as far as our space in our map. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a new file. I'm going to call it map.asm. And I'm actually just going to put it in. We're going to do an org map because we're just going to load this into a specific memory location. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the map in here. 64 characters by 64 characters. And so I'm just going to create this real fast. Okay. So we have 65 lines and we have one line used for the, the org line. So now we have a blank map. Um, and let me, uh, let me zoom in just a little bit so we can take up more space on the screen here. Okay. Now we can draw our map. Now we want to use something that's that's going to be kind of big so we can have something cool to walk around on. So 
I'm just gonna go ahead and draw some of this. Feel free to do whatever you want with this. Uh, remember that we used ones for walls and then uh, twos for the uh, space in you know, on the floor. Uh, so we can do some trickery here. Let's do some of this and do one. And we don't have to get too crazy, but um, let's let's copy here. Now keep in mind this is this is temporary in that we're we're going to be generating these maps uh, automatically, and we're not going to be doing this yeah you know, all the time. But for now, we don't want to mess with that. We want to make it so that we have something that we can walk around on. Um, and you know, so we can take one step at a time. Ah, okay. Right, let's see this here. Okay. And so I'm just gonna I'm just making a simple room here, but I do want to do some hallways and do something kinda kinda interesting with it. Okay. Let's just make it so that, you know, we, we take up quite a bit of space that's not going to fit on the screen at once. Um, let me go ahead and copy that. So we have a big room. And then let's make a passageway down here. So we use threes for doors. Um, and I'll put these down here. And then let's make it do a jog right here. Two, three. And of course you can do whatever you want here. Go crazy with it. Just keep it within the 64 by 64. Um, you know, if you want to try to do bigger, go for it. Uh, but you know, again, we're going to have memory issues if you, if you get into that. Um, okay. So we'll just make it a hallway here. Mm -hmm. One nice thing about doing it this way is we know how many characters we're supposed to have because this is all going to have to line up at the end. Uh, so we can you know, we can make sure that we're we're aligned correctly. Um, and let's make a little room over here. Uh, okay, I feel like I'm a, doing a Bob Ross painting or something. Just add a couple trees, little happy trees, uh, just a little bit of color. Yeah, stuff like that. Okay. Um, have fun with it. That's what this is all about. Now, another thing we could do is use a uh, tile editor for doing something like this. If you were wanting to have your maps loaded in and not do randomized, uh, you could totally do that. Create a bunch of maps using a tile editor uh, and then be able to load them in. Uh, that's a total uh, valid thing you can do here. Um, okay, so we've got, uh, let's just go ahead and put a door here. Um, we've got our room right here we have got a hallway going here and then we have another room over here okay so something just very simple i mean yes we could make this huge sprawling map i don't want to spend a ton of time on it um so we now have a map file in here and i'm going to go ahead and add that to our include list up here so we can be loading it in um map.asm and so what we're going to want to do here is we're going to want to create, we're going to want to put this uh, in a specific spot of memory. I'm actually going to put this, um, I'm going to move stuff around a little bit here. Bear with me uh, just so that we can kind of make a little bit more efficient use of space. Um, I'm going to put it at 3000. Uh, our, our code is at 2000. And so we've got, uh, you know, that much space in between 2000 and 3000 for all of our code. Um, I'm going to put the map at 3000 now because this uses 4k that actually works out to be exactly, you know, 1000 hex, uh, in between. So the nice thing is, but in between 3000 and 4000 will be our map. Um, um, let's 
kind of redundant, but whatever. Um, I'm actually going to stick uh, the... Uh, so the nice thing about doing this, we can, we can move things around. Um, I'm actually going to move our screen. And actually, I'm going to call it, instead of screen, I'm going to call it canvas. And I'm going to put it at 7,000. Our character set we know is only going to be using um, one, you know, 4K uh, the max. So in between, you know, five and 6,000 hex is going to be the max. Now, currently it only uses, um, you know, four pages, but we're going to want to, you know, make more character sets eventually, probably for outdoor stuff. So we want to leave some space there. But so I'm going to, I'm just going to move that to 4,000. Uh, we only need a little bit of there and then we're going to, we're only going to need one here so we can just actually put it there um, just to kind of clean up a little bit. Uh, so we have the map, the character set, uh, the player missile graphics and the canvas. Um, and so what we're going to do is we need to take our display map. We, we're going to change this all around here. Last time we made this macro and I didn't really care for doing it as a macro. A couple of people commented on the, um, on the video and mentioned the fact that, you know, ideally you don't want to use macros cause it's just going to copy that into the code. Um, so I actually came up with a much better way to deal with this. Um, so I'm actually going to just delete all of this right here. Uh, we're not going to do any of these here. These can stay, but we're going to create a new function that is going to copy in from our map to our canvas. Okay. I'm going to call it. So I'm going to create a function, a uh, procedure, sorry, uh, called copy map to canvas. What we're going to want to do here is we're going to create, you're, we're going to need to use uh, some memory on the machine to be able to have some temp space. And we're going to use uh, a trick uh, it's, it's pretty cool actually that, that we're going to use some zero page Ram. Uh, there there's the nice thing about zero page stuff is there's some special functionality in that. And what I mean by zero page is if we're going to have, let's say we have a map, um, I call it map pointer. Um, we can use stuff like 92, uh, in, in our thing. So it, it, in our, on our computer. Now, the reason why we can use 92, it's not a random number there. If we actually look at the memory map, um, 8 bits memory map, and uh, we should be able to see this. So we can actually see, we've, we've referred to this before. I actually have a link in our, um, in our comments that, that goes through and it shows where everything is located. Now, if we go down here, this is all zero page stuff. Uh, see, because it only uses uh, two hex digits here. Um, if we look here, um, we have basic that, that is sitting in, uh, at starting at uh, 90 hex, I believe. So let's, uh, so I scroll up, let's keep going down, I guess. And we can see where that is. So right here, mem top, we don't want to go there. This is where, um, you know, locations 146 to 202, which is 92 to CA, are reserved by the 8K basic ROM. We don't care about basic. So we could actually use um, any of these locations. Uh, you know, you want to kind of be pretty uh, conservative when you're, when you're using zero page stuff because there's a very limited amount of it. But the, the operations that use zero page um, are, are much faster than, than the other ones. And there are a couple tricks that you can do. And there's a couple of instructions that specifically use your zero, zero page. And I'm going to show you how that works. So we're going to start off with using 92 and we don't need leading zeros here. Um, we're going to, we're going to create two pointer locations. And when you're dealing with addresses on an eight bit machine, they actually are 16 bits, bits wide. So it actually takes up two bytes. So we're going to have the map pointer and we're going to have our canvas pointer. Okay. Now I can't put it at 93 because we're going to need two memory locations for the map. We're going to need two memory locations for the canvas. So we're going to use 94. Now we could also do something where we set a variable, uh, for, uh, uh for map pointer low byte and high byte. 
but you know, to, to make it a little bit cleaner, we could do that, but we'll, we'll see how it goes. So we have a map pointer at 92. We have a canvas pointer at 94. And so what first thing we're, we're going to want to do is we're going to want to put the memory locations of our map and our canvas into these pointer locations. Now, the thing is that what we're going to be doing here is copying data. Now, because of the way we've got our data represented in the map versus the canvas, if you remember, because each one of our tiles is two characters wide, we're going to need to do some trickery here to make it so that uh, we're going to use 4K in the map and then 8K on our, our canvas. Um, so we're, it's, it's not going to be a simple copy. Uh, so it's going to be a, a little bit more involved, but you'll see how this goes. We dealt with this a little bit last time, and I, I think I found a, a better way to deal with this. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to copy um, our map location into our map pointer. Now, if we're using MWA, not to be confused with NWA, uh, MWA, this is moving uh, a word using the accumulator, okay? So if you remember, this is a macro that Mads has built in, which does the following. Uh, so it does an LDA of whatever the thing is into say map pointer, and then it, or rather it does a map, and then what it does is does a store into map pointer, and then it'll do a load of, and actually it does like actually this, and you know, the, we don't have to deal with this stuff um, because we have a function for it. Uh, basically what it does is it does both the high byte and the low byte uh, for this. And so it's much nicer when we have it in a, a macro like this. So we don't need all that code. So we're gonna copy the map location into the map pointer location. We're gonna do the same thing for the canvas, okay? Um, canvas pointer, oops, canvas into canvas pointer. Okay, and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna loop through and we're gonna copy the data, but we're also gonna do so that or interpolation that we did to be able to make it go from uh, one byte to two bytes in the canvas. So we're gonna use the Y, uh, we're gonna use the Y index and we have to use the Y register and uh, I'll show you why in a second. So we're gonna just call it loop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna lo load map pointer comma y. Now what this is, is the, this, um, parentheses mu is, it's an indirect reference. Okay. What that means is that the, the parentheses says whatever this, whatever is in this map pointer, use that data. Okay. So the map, which is, uh, if you remember is set to 3000 hex, uh, is now in here. Okay. So we have the 3000 uh, and then an offset of Y. Okay, here we go. That, that Y is actually at zero right now. So we're gonna be using the indirect addressing for this, which can be a bit slow depending on what you're doing, but the way we're doing it here is, is much faster than the other method I was using. Um, okay, so if you remember, we're gonna be changing, say a one, first into two. So we need to do a multiplication, which we did this last time, ASL, which is a arithmetic shift left. Uh, so multiplies by two. And now what we're going to do is we're going to store that into the canvas pointer. If I can type canvas pointer, comma Y in the same location. Great. So we've now copied the effectively, we said 3000 is our map. And I think 6,000 is our screen um, or our canvas, I should say. So currently we have taken one byte and from our map, multiplied it by two and then stored that into our canvas, okay? Um, and the next thing we're gonna wanna do is this cool thing that I found. <laughs> and I, I was kind of blown away. I didn't know that this instruction existed. What that does is it actually will increment a zero page pointer. Uh, and that's huge because what I, I've had to deal with in the past is loading it in and manually incrementing and doing all that stuff. This will take this uh whatever's in here which is currently zero zero because a 93 would be three zero uh because if you remember it does reverse 
it will change that uh, whatever in, in 1992, that'll change it to a zero one. It'll just automatically increase that. So we don't have to do that manually, That, but you have to use zero page for that. We're gonna increment the canvas pointer. And so that is going to give us a, uh, a result in our um, in our, our flags that's going to, you know, it's gonna be either zero or non-zero, you know, uh, if you look at the zero flag. What we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna to want to copy all 256 bytes in this and when it goes up to the next you know when it when it flips the uh the 256 barrier it's going to drop it's, it's going to go back to zero and i want to watch for that because basically what's going to happen is we're, we have a lot more data than than 256 bytes if we just had 256 bytes to copy we could easily just use a simple you know y or x register and just walk through them and no problem but because of this, we have to, have to do a little bit of trickery here. So we're gonna increase it. And then once it hits zero again, we're gonna wanna do something special. And so because uh, uh, we're gonna do that, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do a B and E. So if you remember, that's the branch not equal. That is basically it's, it's waiting for it to be non-zero, okay? Um, and so, uh, it, it, B and E means a branch if it isn't equal to zero effectively in the, in this context. Okay. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to go into, I'm going to create this in a second, but we're going to skip to the next one, uh, to the next loop down here. We're going to say next, not, not loop, but to the next section, uh, because we're going to do something here in the special case where it does go to a zero. What we want to do is we want to increment canvas pointer plus one. Okay. So in that case, it's going to flip the second bit. And we talked about the, on the map pointer, it's going to go from, uh, you know, normally it's going to go, th uh, th zero, zero, three, zero. It's starting at, at 3000. Then it's going to go with zero, one, three, zero, and all the way up to FF. Then when it hits zero again, what we want to do is we want to make that three zero into a three one. And so it, that's where this increment, the three one, that's where we're going to be incrementing the second uh, byte, the high byte in um, the, the, uh, the pointer there. So we're going to go up in there. So this is our little way of kind of making sure that we have, um, you know, our, our canvas pointer is going to keep going up properly so that we can actually go through 256 times 256 bytes so that that's huge okay and so but in the normal case we're going to want to skip down here and that's that's the next step, step that we're going to be doing so we're going to be adding uh one now um we normally would do a uh, clear carry and then add you know, uh, with carry one, but there's actually a macro and somebody uh, actually called this out previously um, is you can actually use add in Mads. There's a, a function that does both clear carry and add in one step um, or the ABC in one step. In, in this particular case, since we're just adding the one number, it, it's fine to use that. We don't always need to use that because sometimes we don't want to clear the carry and we'll be showing that, that uh, uh, later on, but this is totally fine. We're going to add one to it. So if you remember, we we're going to multiply and then add one. That's what we did before. Okay. And then now we're going to store that value into canvas pointer. Okay. With the Y offset. So we have increased the canvas pointer, uh, with this so that, that now, instead of being at, uh, zero for both of them, we actually have zero for, for both and then the canvas pointer goes up, but the map pointer stays the same. So we're gonna end up doing this thing where it's gonna use, for every one of the map, it's gonna use two, or every one byte on the map, it's gonna use two on the canvas. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna store the, um, the additional value. So the one is gonna change into a two and then a three. If you remember, that's what we did. Okay. Uh, and now we're gonna increase Y, increment Y, and we're gonna do a B and E loop. 
and so this is going to go over again and so it's going to go through and do that very thing what i was talking about change a one into two into a three two and three rather changes a two into a four and a five etc etc and that's the same functionality we had last time this is way cleaner than the way we did it last time um okay now what we're going to need to do is once we have gotten to a point where we are um you know at a when we're going to increment y but we're going to need to deal with it when it flips you know flips the uh register into back to zero so we're going to do a check in here so it basically while it's not zero it's just going to go back through okay so it's going to do this 256 times uh until y register flips okay and so now what we're going to do is once we've gone out of that we're going to need to increase the map pointer plus one or increment i should say and just the same way we did with this so uh changing from the three zero uh zero zero we're going to change it to three one zero zero you know stuff like that so so that will increase our map pointer plus one and we need to do the same thing with a canvas pointer okay and now we need to check to see if we're done okay because we have uh 4k of memory to to go through we want to make sure that that we don't go into the next section okay um so the way we can do that is pretty easy what we can say is we're going to load in we're going to do a comparison here of the map pointer plus one okay so that's going to be the three zero three one three two and it's going to go up okay now because of the space required it's going to go all the way up to three f zero zero and actually eventually three f f f would be the last byte that it would it would do okay so it's flipped now once we've got to this point once we're done it's going to be at four thousand or you know it's zero zero four zero and we want it to stop okay and the way we can do that is we can do a comparison to say we're going to compare the actual value there of map plus one thousand okay so this could we could put in four thousand uh if we wanted to but you know we don't know exactly where the map is going to be stored we happen to be saying 3000 right now so i don't want to kind of hard code that we do know that it's only going to be uh this 4k size so we can actually say this and this little guy says look at the high byte only and uh so what we want to be doing is looking to compare to see if this says four zero yet okay because we have our map which is 3000 plus 1000 so it's 4000 now we're going to be looking at four zero if it is not that we're going to do a b and e loop and that is it so we can say this and we can end the procedure so this will copy our entire map into our canvas and um it does it a lot more efficiently than what we did before we don't have a lot of hard coding stuff that that we dealt with before and and it's just much much cleaner uh it does use the zero page which you know it, it's not something that you want to try to do all the time but in this particular case it, it makes things so much nicer to be able to use this increment um uh function so i'm going to say copy map canvas okay and we'll just change this copies map <laughs> uh map to canvas and yeah we can get a little uh with interpolation uh, sure sounds great okay let's just clean that up okay i'll go ahead and save that and now we need to call it so instead of the display map, we're now going to do copy map to canvas. Okay. And so, you know, we still got a lot of work to do, but we've got now we've got our map and we've got it copying to the canvas. The next thing we're going to need to do 
is deal with the display list and in order to set up scrolling, okay? Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the like button. If you'd like to see more of this kind of content, be sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell. I post new videos all the time and I wouldn't want you to miss any. If you'd like to see more of this series, be sure to click up here. And if you'd like to see something else, be sure to click up here. As always, see you in the next adventure. Take care.